Hashem is for those who fear Him. Again, the same Yudresh. Each one of these sentences has the same root. Why? Reshit Chokhmah Yirat Hashem. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of Hashem. But also, Yirat Hashem, Iyotzaro. Fear of Hashem, that's His treasure. You want to have wisdom? You want to have the treasure? They both are the same thing. What? Have fear of Hashem. Have fear of Hashem. That's where it all starts. That's where it all starts. And the fear continues. It's not just fear of Geinom. It's fear of the majesty. And eventually it gets you to love Hashem. Eventually it gets to such a passionate state of mind that you're all serving Him that even Geinom is not scary for the reason of why other people are scared of. It's scary for you because it means your service is not complete yet. He gave you so much, and you didn't give him. It's not, it's not a fair deal. It's not a fair deal. You disrespected the majesty. You don't feel like it's a fair trade. Why? Because he gave you so much, you didn't give him back. That's not love. Imagine, your wife cooks, cleans, brings you kids, everything else. What do you give her? A slap in the face. What kind of husband are you? A dog is better than you. Or like some of these guys. They call themselves a poor excuse for a husband. They look at other women other than their wives. Imagine, a guy is married to a woman. She gives him, she cooks, she cleans, she uh, takes care of the kids. She, she's with him uh, intimately. She does everything for him. What does he do? He looks at other girls. A dog is better than a guy like that. A dog. A dog is better than him. Why? Because a dog is instinct. And he barely looks at other, uh, other females. A guy that looks at a woman other than his wife is worse than a dog. A dove is better than him. Why? Because a dove is known. A dove is only with, with one mate. The whole life. A penguin is better than him. A penguin only has one mate. Meaning if a husband looks at another woman as not his wife, he's worse than an animal. Kfuy tova. But that's the thing, Abu Tai. When we're only thinking about ourselves, we don't have time to think about anybody else. We have time to think about the person that's right next to us. And if we don't have time to think about the person that's right next to us, our wife, how are we going to think about God? How are we going to think about God? You don't have time to think about the person that's right next to you. You can see, you can touch. You're holding her. Hey, hey, hey. How, how could you hold her hand and you look at another, another woman? How? How do you do it? It has nothing to do with being religious. It has nothing to do with being religious. Just being a human being. How do you look at another woman? Your wife is right there. I understand. It's instinct. You look, a person runs around naked, you're like, you're look, oh, fine, as an instinct. I understand, you'll, you'll, I understand, as an instinct. But how many times instinct? What, every woman's instinct? Every woman's an instinct? The fat one, the skinny one, the black one, the yellow one, the green one, everyone's an instinct? Everything that moves is instinct? On the computer's instinct too? On the TV's instinct too? Everyone's an instinct? And that's why Rabotai, a person that doesn't know how to watch his eyes, the shiur, the shiur ended in the first two minutes. Why? There's no Yirat Shamayim. There's no Yirat Shamayim. There's no interest in Yirat Shamayim. There's, it's just rationalization. He's trying to rationalize. No, no, I can get the Gan Eden by rationalizing my way in there. I don't need to do all these mitzvot, these Yirat Shamayim stuff. That's just to scare people. I'm too smart to be scared. You understand? So, Rabotai, men, you wa must watch your eyes. Why? This is the window to Gan Eden Ogenum. You watch your eyes, you have a chance of going to Gan Eden. You don't, definitely go to Genom, and not for three days. Not for three days. Why? You're Kfuy Tova. You're an ungrateful person. And if you're ungrateful to your wife, how are you going to be grateful to Hashem? How? Same goes for wives. Don't start complaining to your husband about he's not watching his eyes when you keep asking him to go to the mall. You keep asking him to go to the park. What do you think? Everybody's wearing jackets in the park in the hot sun? What, all of a sudden they're all wearing jackets now because your husband came? Oh, yeah. No, Mr. Mr. Rosenberg is coming. Women, no, please, come on. Come on, women, let's go. One time, one in a row, let's all wear long jackets. What do you think? Do people go to the, 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 to the park with jackets? 
Why are you asking people? Why are you asking your husband to go to the park? Why are you asking your husband to go to the mall? What's he going to do in the mall other than look at girls? Food? Eat at home. Oh, I want to go to a restaurant. You want a husband or you want the restaurant? What do you want? What's more important to you? You want special food? You can order. You don't have to go anywhere. Why? Because the reality is about Thai people walking around naked everywhere. So why put yourself in that place where it's very hard for the guy to watch his eyes? He's already a half an animal. Now you're just helping him. You can't blame the guy. It's not just his fault. You keep asking him to go uh, three times a week to the park, once a week to the mall, four times a week to the movies. And on top of it, you have a TV in the house. You want to watch a movie with him. Movie night. Let's watch all of the most beautiful people in the world naked. Rabbi Vigdor Miller of Alava Shalom said, I don't understand people that have a TV. You don't want to invite the goyim into your house, but you have one in your house chopping all day. Bah, 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 all day on the TV. Chap, da, 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 all day. You don't want to invite them into your house, but they're on your TV all day. How? How do you justify this stuff? That's because we're not thinking. It's because we're not thinking. Now, if you're using a, a big screen that used to be a TV to go learn Shuat Torah, it's a different story. It's not TV. I'm talking about TV, watching cable, watching movies, that type of stuff. If you're going to a playground where you know there's a certain section, there's nobody there, you're going with the kids, you start, fine, is watch yourself once in a while. But again, if you know this is a very popular area and people like to run and, and bicycle and all that type of stuff, pretty much like they just came out of Gan Eden with Adam and Chaba before the sin, what do you expect, Rabotai? What do you expect? So that's the thing. The men, you have to watch your eyes. The women, you have to stop putting the guys in certain tests that they can't, they, they're not Moshe Rabbeinu. They're not Moshe Rabbeinu. And that's, that's what a person needs. This is part of Abu Dat Hashem. This is part of serving Hashem. This is part of it. If you want to be part of the neighborhood and you want to have a lot of friends, you want to have barbecue parties at the park and at the beach and all this uh, Yom Atzma'ut, Independence Day and the parades and go to a new parade every week for the gays and the lesbians and the Kuflim and the, the Zionists and all these people that are enemies of Hashem. Fine, just know that the shiur, it's not three days, it's not three days gain, no. This is a different shiur. But if a person wants to serve Hashem, then there's certain sacrifices, if you will, that they need to make. Their eyes belong in two places, or three. The wife, the kids, and the Sefer Torah. The wife, the kids, and the Sefer Torah. That's, that's, where, the, that's where the husbands are. Of course, there's certain times you need for business, you have a customer, but anyone that's working on themselves is going to constantly minimize every interaction possible. You minimize. You don't stare. You work on yourself because you know how valuable it is. You learn so much Torah and then you look at a woman and you, see you forget everything all of a sudden. If you don't know what I just said, if you don't understand what I said, that means you either never learned or you haven't watched your eyes. But the point is, Abotayim, you need to understand these are the keys to success. There's no easy way. There's no shortcut. This is the way. You want to live in this world? You want to enjoy this world? You're going to have a lot of problems. You're not going to have happiness. But once you actually work on these few things, you do these things, it's hard work, but you'll actually have a sense of pleasure in this life.